All right, let's get straight into this because this is actually a big deal and a lot of people are not talking about what it really means. Samsung is basically sending a message right now, a very clear message. And that message is simple. They don't want to depend on Qualcomm forever. For years, Samsung phones have been split into two worlds. Some people get Snapdragon, some people get Exynos. And let's be honest, most users felt like Snapdragon was the better one. Better power, better battery, better performance. That reputation stuck for a long time. But now, things are changing. Samsung just announced the Exynos 2600, and this chip is built on Samsung's own 2 nanometer process. That alone is huge. 2 nanometer is next level stuff. This puts Samsung back into the serious chip race, not just making phones, but making the brains inside those phones. And here's the important part. Companies do not spend this kind of money just to play a small role. An analyst named Samir Kazaka basically said, look, Samsung would not pour billions into custom CPU and GPU work if Exynos was just gonna stay as the backup chip. This is Samsung aiming for control. Let's break this down in a simple way. Right now, Samsung pays Qualcomm a lot of money for Snapdragon chips, and that number keeps going up. The Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5 is expected to cost around $270 plus per chip. That is crazy expensive. And next year, Gen 6 could go past $300. Imagine selling millions of phones and paying that price every single time. That hurts, even for Samsung. So what's the plan? The plan is Exynos everywhere. But Samsung can't just flip a switch. There are problems they need to fix first. The biggest one is yield. When Exynos 2600 started mass production, the yield was around 50%. That means half the chips made were not good enough to use. That's not great. Samsung needs to push that number higher if they want Exynos in most phones. Because right now, due to the deal with Qualcomm, about 75% of Galaxy S26 phones will still use Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5. Only about 25% will use Exynos 2600. But here's the key thing. That deal with Qualcomm will end at some point. And once that agreement is done, Samsung has freedom. Freedom to choose. Freedom to push Exynos into more phones. And honestly, they are clearly preparing for that moment. Now let's talk about the real long-term play here. Samsung is not just improving Exynos. They are rebuilding it from the inside. There are reports that Samsung has created a special team that only works on in-house CPU and GPU designs. This is huge. This means Samsung does not want to depend on ARM cores forever. They want their own CPU designs, just like Apple. Think about Apple for a second. Apple controls everything. CPU, GPU, software, hardware. That's why their chips are so powerful and efficient. Samsung wants that same level of control. And according to leaks, the Exynos 2800 could be the first chip where we really see this vision come alive. Custom CPU, custom GPU, no more small changes, real identity. And this is where things get interesting with graphics. Samsung already made a big move with the Exynos 2600 by using AMD's RDNA-aced GPU, the Xclipse 960. This one uses a customized RDNA 4 setup called MGFX4. Sounds fancy, but the simple version is this. Samsung is learning. They are learning how to make serious mobile GPUs, and that knowledge stacks over time. Each generation gets better. The Exynos 2800 is expected to go even further, and if Samsung nails this, Exynos could finally stop being seen as the worst version. Now, think about the Galaxy S27 lineup. If Exynos 2800 is good enough, Samsung could put it in most S27 phones worldwide. That means less Snapdragon, less money paid to Qualcomm, more control, more profit. And that's exactly what Samsung wants. From a business point of view, this makes total sense. Why keep paying another company more and more money every year when you can build your own solution and improve it over time? Yes, it's hard. Yes, it takes years. But Samsung is one of the few companies big enough to actually pull this off. Now, let's also talk about Samsung Foundry, because this is another huge piece of the puzzle. Samsung doesn't just design chips, they make them too. 
They're already working on second generation 2 nanometer GAA, and they plan to roll out a third version called SF2P Plus in about two years. This means Samsung wants to compete directly with TSMC, not just in phones, but in the entire chip world. Better nodes mean better power use, better performance, better efficiency. If Samsung can improve yields and keep pushing these advanced processes, Exynos becomes even more attractive. So when you look at the full picture, this is not just about one chip. This is about Samsung saying, we want control over our future. They want to decide how powerful their phones are, how efficient they are, how much they cost to make. And yes, Snapdragon is still amazing, Qualcomm still makes great chips, but Samsung does not want to be locked into that relationship forever. This is a slow shift, not a sudden one. You'll still see Snapdragon in Samsung phones for a while, especially in high-end models, especially in markets like the US. But behind the scenes, Samsung is building something big. Exynos is not being treated as a side project anymore. It's being treated like a core weapon. And if Samsung succeeds, we could be looking at a future where most Galaxy phones run on Exynos with custom CPUs, strong GPUs, better battery life, and full Samsung control. That's the goal. The big question is execution. Can Samsung improve yields? Can they match Snapdragon performance? Can they win back trust? We'll find out over the next few years. But one thing is very clear. Samsung is not backing down. Samsung is not playing small. And Exynos is no longer the underdog it used to be. This is just the beginning.